This Asian mom just started a book campaign to help stop Asian lunch shaming at school. Guys, the question is, should you let your Asian kid bring traditional Asian food to school or should you just let them assimilate? Read about B.I.G. when I went to prison last summer and he, oh, what is that? Bro, it's Chinese food. My mom made it. Get it out of here. Oh my God. Ew, what's that? That is so gross. What's that, Andrew, is the title of the Asian book campaign that is designed to educate the youth of America to not lunch shame anybody for their traditional Asian foods. They got a Via one, an Indian one, a Filipino one, a Korean one. And uh, interestingly enough, Andrew, this book campaign sparked a myriad of comments and not all are supportive a lot were but some of them strikingly enough went against karen chan yeah guys so we're gonna get into the comment section please hit that like button check out other episodes of the for the hot pop boys i would say these books are meant for our mostly non-asian kids or asian kids of a different asian culture to learn about other asian cultures or what if they're like third fourth generation so they're starting to become disconnected from the grandparents mm -hmm. culture who are obviously like born and raised in asia yeah i mean i think the real question is here like what are the limitations are there limitations to what type of weird or interesting asian food you should bring to lunch whether it's the workplace or school because some of it can smell and stain the tables, you know, curries and stuff like that. So I think that's the big question. And I do think there's also an undertone of a culture war here where people are like, quit saying I attacked you when you were young, Karen. I wasn't there. I don't remember attacking you for you eating all them uh, demon eggs or them zombie eggs or whatever you eat. You can all go but, eat them in the corner. But I just wanted to bring Balut to school. Like, <laughs> But anyways, guys, real quick, uh, we got to give a shout out to our Chili oil product, Smala. It is coming out soon. Please click the link down below if you guys want to sign up to get updates or follow us on Instagram. This is something we've been working on over the past year. It is Smala oil, so it has a little bit of that tingling, numbing buzz, but it's also smooth like a Italian Calabrian chili oil, so it's kind of a mixture of East and West. It's almost like Sichuan meets Sicilian. Yeah, it, 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 that's a good way of putting it. Also, like maybe it's like a half Italian, half Chinese. I'm kid. telling you guys, I... I'm very, very confident that Smala is unlike anything available on the market, and you're going to want to put this on everything. And, so uh, check it out. We put it in a squeeze bottle. So there's no mess. And if you sign up early, you will get a discount on the mailing list. Let's get into the comment section, Andrew. Somebody said, this happened to me, but I'm a little bit older in my 40s. Does this still happen to kids nowadays? Andrew, some people in the comment section were debating whether or not Karen Chan is like too late with her book series. Nah, it still happens. I mean, James Corden and Jimmy Fallon just in the past like three years were grossed out at boba mm. boba is not even anywhere near the weirdest asian food you could possibly eat. out of three tiers boba's like tier one in terms of like how tame it is right yeah it's super like it's just milk and tea and you yo know, yo jason sudeikis tried to play us out too that kind of made me mad somebody said uh i'm a liberal white mom other cultures are great i'm gonna be buying this what's that series for my kids so they can be more cultured yeah somebody said uh i mean i would look at these books a little bit like our food videos right mm. we show you foods we talk about them we try to break it down in like a simple way make it accessible now if it's very advanced and very weird looking a lot of people won't try it but a lot of people will try the lower level more simple looking stuff yeah i'm glad that these books exist but yeah some people could say too little too late but still better late than never somebody said uh, we are new york jews and we love other cultures my kids eat indian and sushi every single week i would say this andrew after meeting a lot of uh you know jewish people in new york some of them have really really high asian food iq yeah and you know what's really interesting though i will say this once you uh have only had the Americanized version in your life. I, I know some people who for like 10 years just ate like orange chicken. Like they ate it since they were six years old, but by the time they're like 20, they still haven't really expanded their Asian palate that much. Right, is I that kind of like watching basketball your whole life and literally you do not understand any plays other than like somebody just dunking on somebody? Like you never like yeah. let the game like seep into your brain. I mean, it's funny because even when you step out of your comfort zone, you can just step into another another comfort zone. It, it's about like your intellectual curiosity to peel back the layers of the onion. Some people like layer one of the onion, even though there's like five layers. Somebody says, for me, I'd be insanely jealous. Come on, it's 2023, people. You're telling me kids are making fun of people for those delicious dumplings. And I'm saying... Honestly, it really depends on where in America, right? I think when I was getting older in high school, some kids would talk to me about the Ling Lings, you know, those like dumplings uh, from Costco. But of course, to this day, do I think they're eating the, the Shandong Weichuan dumplings that are Shui Jiao instead of the potstickers? I don't know. I still think, like you said, they're, they're still on potstickers. Right. 
Um, like you said, people only go to the level that they want to. Somebody said, hey, guys, eat whatever you want, but please be respectful and do not bring food that stinks to high heaven. It might be your culture, but please respect my culture of thinking some things from your culture stink. Uh, yeah, I think that there is a generally accepted uh, a limitation that like if it really is stinking up the environment or it's going to stain or be soupy and spill everywhere, maybe be more considerate and not bring that exact item. You're saying if I bring an Assam laksa, a curry laksa and crazy durian and jackfruit from Malaysia to the lunchroom and I reheat it in the shared microwave, that might be not the right read. That would be Going overboard, yes. Um, and we got a really funny story. I remember one time Mama and our, our grandma came from Hong Kong. She's Shanghainese, and she bought Dad some, like, mackerel on clearance at QFC in Seattle, which is a supermarket. And he had to microwave it at work, and he had worked a corporate job, like an engineering job. And some people was, all of a sudden, the corporate lunchroom turned into... Everybody being in fifth grade again. Yeah, Ew, yeah. That is stinks, Casey. What's going on? I'm not going to lie. If I was dad at that time, I'm sure I would have been pretty embarrassed because you're like an old guy. You're educated. You're working this job. And then you're stinking up the lunchroom and everybody just turns into little kids again and is like grossed out. And it's a human reaction. It's not fully their fault. I mean, I don't think they're trying to be mean, but... Also, like, they're definitely not trying to be conscientious of a culture. So I guess, uh, man, that sucks. Yeah, especially mackerel. Mackerel got a, 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 a flavor to it. Um, I remember one time I bought shrimp pad. See you, Andrew. Yeah, I, I used to work at the cell phone store in Issaquah. And I remember, uh, shout out to Jess, there was this white girl there. And she was like, what the F? She went on a crazy rant in the back room about how bad this shrimp pad. See you smelled. But later, we did find out that she was addicted to Oxycontin. Yeah, which is really funny because uh, white people actually love Thai food. Or at least Pad Thai. But they like Pad Thai. I don't know if they like shrimp Pad Thai. Because like we were talking about, Andrew, there's the beginner section, the intermediate, and then advanced. But, but right? maybe they cook that Pad to you with a little extra fish sauce. Who knows? But anyways, this guy said, I'm European. I love canned sardines, just like many people in Italy and Spain and Portugal love. But I would never bring them on the train. I'm just being respectful. Why would you ever put your kids through this? Yeah, so here's my thing, man. I'm all about sharing cultures, and I think people should keep bringing Asian food for lunch. Keep doing it. But just so you understand that your 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 coworkers or your uh, classmates might not be as open at that moment. So bring something that's a little bit more accessible and bring them up to speed step by step. Like don't just bring ten out of ten. You know, century. Well, what's eggs a good level? Lunch. What's a good level? Century right. eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the intermediate. If I, we're gonna go low, middle, high, like beginner, intermediate, advanced, century level I eggs mean, is in the middle listen, tier. Century century eggs might be a little bit too advanced. Tomato egg. A little bit more regular. Bring in Smala, yeah. beginner. Yeah. Because this is already mixed with some East-West fusion. Yeah. Um, this guy was a Japanese-American. He gave a pretty moderate response, and he was like, man, I love Kasuya, which is a uh, dry Japanese fish, but I know I just can't bring it, but I might sneak in a little here or there in a tiny Ziploc bag that has no smell leaking. <laughs> Yo, what if he's in his cubicle and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> Nato, Kasuya. Somebody says, uh, I don't even remember this happening. How does what's this even count as shaming? Everybody wants to claim racism and victimhood nowadays, man. I don't remember this when I was growing up. This guy's accusing Karen Chan of being a liar for her experience. But here's the truth, Andrew. Your experience may vary. Your mileage may vary. America's a very big country. You could have grown up in this slice where... People loved it. You could have grown up in this slice where people made uh, a face, but they didn't say anything. And you could have grown up in a slice of America where literally people were super racist and ostracized for you, ostracized you for your school lunch. That's it, exactly. And any man. of those outcomes are possible. Yeah, and it also depends on the tone. Because if somebody, some the nice girl that you had a crush on was like, "Oh, what's that?" versus the girl that you had a crush on was like, "What's that?" Completely different statements. We all know that. Right. Wayne is stinky. Get away from me for the rest of my life. Somebody said, uh, Americans love super preserved factory refined foods and think that anything that looks in its natural form is gross. They won't touch anything that isn't layer one like sushi, boba, or KBBQ. No, 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 no. I mean, this is a stereotype, but overarchingly, yeah, this is probably true. I mean, I hope America can move past layer one right now. But Andrew, right now, if you want to open up a restaurant that is successful in the non-Asian area, Keep your food at beginner level, right? It's better to for business reasons. But I'll say this overall, the takeaway, guys. One, I do think there are 
limitations that you should have on the food that you bring to school. Just, well, is it fish? Is it curry bun real? Shrimp paste? Fish paste? Where, where, where is it at? Where, where are we talking about? consideration for everybody there, if it's soupy and it can spill easily, maybe you don't bring it, right? Unless it's in a canister, you know, a little like thermos. Right, you're saying bring the fresh rolls with the peanut sauce. Yeah, I mean, there's all different, there's so many dishes out there you can bring. Um, yeah, and also I think that if you are going to be proud of your culture, you do have to stand up straight and be proud of it to the point where you're taught how to speak with it, right? So if tell your kid what they're bringing to school and what they can tell kids if you're very proud of the food. Right, you're saying do the due diligence and educate your kid for the inevitable yeah, questions see, they might the encounter. the issue is that a lot of like immigrant parents were just like packing their kids like whatever they ate last night, which is fine, it tastes good at home, but they were just like, oh yeah, okay, Jimmy, take this to school, okay, boom. And then Jimmy's like, I don't know what it is. He opens it up and then it kind of like has this new aroma that kids aren't So many used aromatics, to. right? So many uh, ginger, and then Jimmy's soy just sauce, like, fermented things. Jimmy's panicking because he's like, ah, I didn't mean to look, I didn't want to feel different, ah. I mean, even when you were in elementary, Andrew, there was a kid who was always bringing stuff in, in the audience in elementary school was split opinion, right? Like half, half. Yeah. So there was a couple other Asian kids. I was excited to see what Gary was always bringing to lunch because I thought it was good because his parents worked at restaurants. So he was always bringing like restaurant food. Got some traditional. So it was delicious. Right? But I was one of the few that was excited to see like, oh, Gary, what, what do you got today, man? What, what, what is that? So. Right, you know. but there were some other kids probably being like, "Ugh, Gary, yeah. stinky." Yeah, you know, weird hey, stuff. sometimes you bring, uh, sometimes you can bring dumplings. Everybody wants dumplings, and sometimes you bring the smelly fish. I got this last really interesting theory. This guy said, "If we raised all the kids to be like Rocky Aoki from Benihana's or Bruce Lee, then we wouldn't need books like this to educate anybody because people would think that Asians were so cool they would want to be Asian and they would run towards our culture. But how come we're not raising our kids to be cultural warriors that are like these beacons of light that are so cool that everybody wants to follow? Why are we still trying to like educate against the downside?" Dude, classic Asian guy saying, "Why doesn't everybody just be like Bruce Lee? If everybody was like Bruce Lee, this wouldn't happen." Yeah, I mean, yeah, things would be different if everybody actually learned to be like Bruce Lee. But, I mean, I would say, hey, man, you know, we make food videos talking about food, exploring right. different foods, explaining different foods. I don't expect everybody to try the 10 out of 10 level stuff. But if we can get people to level three, level four, step by step, step by step. I, I think it's tough work, man. It's tough work to be like, okay, here's my culture. Let me categorize all the dishes. Beginner, intermediate, advanced. Let me come up with the game plan to introduce people. Okay, this guy, he might be more cool with intermediate. This person wants advanced. 80% of the demographics more are stuck in beginner. And then I'm going to come up with this plan to inch them there. I, I can see not everybody like has the plan or wants to run the plan because it's like too much thinking in the background, like additional on to surviving and right, thriving right, in this right, country. Right, but right. you guys let us know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think Karen Chan's What's That book series is a good idea? Would you cop it for your kids or your nephew or your nieces? And uh, what do you think of this whole discussion? It seems like we've been having this discussion in Asian America, AAS 101 for like 50 years now. Hey, if you're bringing potentially smelly Asian food to lunch, just be prepared to explain what it is to your friends, and don't panic. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.